What a day to savour in Dublin as Ireland were crowned back-to-back -back Six Nations champions. They were certainly made to work for it by Scotland, but these certainly are glory days for Irish rugby. Fifth time in 11 years they have secured that trophy and quite a lot for us to savour. How will they look back on it all, Fiona, for 2024? Oh, look, they'll be delighted. It's another trophy, another medal in the cabinet. Um, I think they will review it, so review it honestly, looking f towards that South African tour, but the overall development of the squad. Um, there were, yeah, there'll be players moving on over the next couple of months, but management as well. Obviously, Andy Goodman is coming in instead of Cash. Farrell's taking a sabbatical at the end of the year. So, you know, they'll have a lot to work on and, and a lot of raw materials and to move forward with the under 20s doing so well that conveyor belt of players coming through so we will see change within the squad what are the biggest questions for them to answer off the back of this Stephen um well first of all the questions were going to be posed to them after the rugby world cup about the hangover that they were going to get or going to possibly have and then they hit the ground running straight away against france so when they go to south africa they're going to have to do the same again because even though today's performance was a winning one it wasn't a particularly good one and if they have that performance away in South Africa, they won't win the game. It's as simple as that. So that's what they're going to have to work on and improve on, especially their line-out. Um, faltered a little bit against England, of course it did. A couple today weren't brilliant. Um, other aspects of their game, they didn't have the same flow. They weren't getting the same amount of dominant carries. So they'll review every aspect of the game, but they've got great foundations there. They've got a trophy, another trophy in the cabinet and the confidence will be flying high. And in a way, that's a great position for Andy Farrell to be in, to be able to say, look, there's the trophy, but we did tail off a little bit with performances. There's an awful lot of work to do here. Yeah, I, I mean, you've got the side that has been the best in the Northern Hemisphere the last two years, winning the Six Nations back-to-back, -back, going up against the World Cup champions in a few months. That's going to be a serious test. They're going to have to figure out a plan B when a side they don't get as much dominance over a side, as much territory over a side, don't have you know, um, the ability to launch as easy as they have done off a lineup, for example, and go multi-phase. They, they have to figure out when they come up against, because the South African side will be similar in, in ways to England last week, for example. They have to come out, figure out ways of how they negate those kind of strengths and find the weaknesses uh, in, in those oppositions. And that's going to be the, kind of the next challenge for this side. It's been a weird tournament overall when you look back on it, Fiona. And maybe the World Cup hangover has a bit to do with that. But it does seem like Ireland, of all of them, have just managed it the best. Yeah, I think particularly going away to France in that first game, uh, you know, when we're probably going to be up against it with a hostile crowd. Yes, France didn't perform, but I think Ireland were ruthless in that game. I think they tapered off in their ruthlessness as the games went on, uh, but managed to keep winning except for that England game, but we're in with a shout, even not playing well. Um, but I, I do think, like, I think their line-out in particular, they score so many tries off their line-out. That short passing game and attack that they didn't get that because they didn't have the dominant carries. Um, but, you know, that's not for, for tonight. That's going to be further down the road for um, Farrell. He, he, they will enjoy tonight very much and, and the next couple of weeks and then it's back to club. But they'll have very little time to prep and go into that away to South Africa, which will be tough as well. But again, we don't know where South Africa are going to be at. They're going to have turnover in their squad. Mm. Um, Razi Rasmus is very much about trialling new things throughout the World Cups. He spoke today about he doesn't care about his win percentages throughout the four years. He just wants to win World Cups. Whereas in Ireland, we focus on the Six Nations. It's a very important competition to Ireland, not just the players, the public, everyone involved, whereas um, the, cha the championship doesn't seem as important to South Africa. And in fairness, it's the only trophy Ireland can win this year. You know, they won the available trophy, Stephen. We can't ask too much more of them. No, definitely not. Definitely not. And the boys, like, they'll be absolutely delighted with, with, with getting the trophy, and so are all of we. You know, um, what more can they do? I think we're sort of nitpicking a bit, aren't we? And, you know, how Ireland can win a trophy, but yet we still expect it probably to the, from the win a Grand Slam. It's, it's really weird, isn't it? But that's the standards that they set themselves and, and the standards that they probably set for all of us in that first game against France because the level was just so, so high. They were ruthless. Their accuracy was off the charts. Um, it felt like Jack Crowley came in straight away. It filled Johnny Sexton's boots really easily. And then all of a sudden, things start not going your way. But they reacted well and, you know, they're going to have a lot of things not go their way down in South Africa and there are going to be a lot of reactions. Yeah, well, look, either way, we are going to be uh, savouring that when it does come around. But before we leave this tournament, I know you had some moments that you absolutely loved. And for you, Jamie, when kids watch moments like this, they want to go out, they want to practice things like what you saw Le Garrick do. Yeah, Le Garrick last week um, throwing like a 40 metre pass 
of you know reverse pass, I should say, uh, is a pretty ses- special moment for me. It's a moment where coaches scream no, 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 and then it lands <laughs> and they scream yes, yes, yes. And you want to kind of inspire kids to go out the next day and go out the front of their house, on the, out into the green in front of their houses, and uh, you know just give it a go and, and play with a bit of fun, a bit of freedom, and, and uh, a bit of French French flair. Yeah, he had a good bit of that tonight as well. In fairness, Stephen, you've chosen the Italy celebrations from their win against Scotland, and I'm sure they had a few of these tonight as well. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was great to watch. They're a bit more subdued today with their victory over Wales, but. The biggest talking point of the competition, of course, is Ireland winning the Six Nations. But I think the second biggest talking point is how far Italy have come on their journey. And you can see what it means to the players. Like, you can hear the tears um, from the lads, the, just the emotions coming out. Michelle Amaro there, you know, a captain in the team, the emotion, the passion that they play with every single week. And, you know, even guys like Sebastian Negri, who was in the, the Six Nations documentary last year, you see how much it means to these players to wear that jersey, but when they actually go out and perform and create history on their home turf against Scotland, I thought the celebrations were just magic. Yeah, I just think in terms of Italian rugby, like they don't play it in school, they play it in certain clubs around the region. It's never been in the public kind of domain of where they're at, but then to see that win and all over the papers, I just, I thought that was huge as well. Yeah, it was magic. Well, speaking of magic, we couldn't have another moment without <laughs> letting the Late Late Toy Show infiltrate the Six Nations <laughs> tournament because here is Stevie singing Ireland's call, Fiona Coughlin's moment of the tournament. Have a listen, have a look at this, and Fiona, you can talk us through why you thought this was so special. the cheeky little come on Ireland at the end but the bravery of an eight-year-old to out and sing in front of 55,000 people but sing it so well it was just brilliant to see and like so much about sport is not just on the pitch it's off the pitch as well and I just thought it was a really special moment. Uh, when the emotions took over the whole place I think everybody felt that that was something to savour. Yeah it? and even afterwards the team brought him into camp and you know he was star of the show really which is huge for him or any little kid saying Jesus an eight-year-old out there singing I was Really impressed with him. Yeah, it was. Well, look, it has been an absolutely magnificent uh, tournament that has finished in victory for Ireland. We're going to have to leave it there. My thanks to Jamie, to Stephen and to Fiona for their company today and right throughout the tournament because that is it for another year. Only 323 days until it all kicks off again when Ireland will be going for three in a row. Until then, good night. Two games to go in the Six Nations. All four teams involved can still mathematically win. Ireland, of course, hoping for back-to-back titles. Oh, here's John Sheehan. And it's a gift to Troy to get Ireland on the board. Oh, they have different plans for this ball. Lovely little variation quarter. Hugh Jones breaks through. Lovely step. Brilliant from Hugh Jones, and over he goes. Ireland have done it. They find a way to beat Scotland. Ireland retain their title. They are champions again. Ireland are the Six Nations title winners back to back.